Believe it or not, a single slice of this stuff can lead to a brilliant day's fishing on commercials when you're fishing for carp in the winter months. When no other hook bait works, this stuff is deadly. But to catch on it, you've really got to use your loaf. I've brought you to Partridge Lakes on Holbar. Got some absolutely stunning carp in here, and hopefully, I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks to catch on bomb and bread. And worst case scenario, you'll never go hungry. Ooh. Bread is a deadly hook bait at this time of year. It's one of my favourites when I'm fishing for carp. It's caught me fish when all other baits have failed. One, I think it's because it's bright white. It's really visual. The fish can see it very easily. And two, it's a really soft hook bait that they suck in nice and confidently and you get brilliant hook holds. Kicking off the session, I'll be honest, I think it's going to be really, really tough today. Not a lot of bites. Absolutely Baltic, like two, three degrees max. But it's a typical winter's day when you're not fishing for a lot of bites, then hopefully I'll give you a few tips to catch on bomb and bread. So I'm going to start the session with two 10 mil punches of bread. It's my favourite sort of size when I'm fishing for big carp like here at Old Bar. So I'm literally going to whack them on a speed stop, put them two pieces on like that. I'll run through the rig and, and the hooks and stuff like that later on. But I just want to start the session so as you can see from the peg I've got today, I've got loads of like bulrush reeds. I'm not sure what the actual name of them reeds are, but I'm pretty sure they're called bulrushes. And I've got a big blanket of them to my right. There's loads of them. That's the best part of my peg. I think that's where I'm going to get most of my bites. But I don't want to start there straight away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the left-hand side of my peg, up right tight up to them reeds, because that's where the fish are going to be at this time of year. They love cover. They love anything like that. I think you're just living in around it and so I want to fish right in there and I've actually clipped up already one great tip when you want you're cutting up don't chuck your bomb straight out as tight as to them reeds as you can because that's just going to spook fish so what I like to do is chuck about two meters off and then simply peel line off here in with my hand and then put my line on the clip that way I'm not chucking a bomb directly on the heads because like I said, we might only be fishing for two or three bites today and I want to give myself as much chance as possible. So I want to make as least noise as I can. So I'm going to cast this in to the left hand side of my peg, tight to them reeds. That's where they're going to be. Perfect cock. Got it caught on this near reed there. That's a great start. Don't tighten up too much. You don't want to move that bomb once it's landed and when you're actually fishing bomb and bread a lot of people have said to me before do you think the bread sinks to the bottom do you think it pops up i know for a fact it pops up and if you're ever like worrying or thinking about if it does just put it in the edge usually at this time of year it's really clear conditions you can actually see the bread popped up and the reason why i like it popped up is because it's right in front of the carp's face because they won't be sat right on the bottom they'll be a little bit off bottom and if your bread's popped up here a nice bright visual white hook bait it's perfect presentation the, the carp are going to be in and around here and they're going to be not able to resist it i'm going to chuck it in there i'm quite happy where it landed to be honest that's where i, I think it's going to a few fish will be if they're there and another thing that i want to stress such an important part of this time of year is liners and indications if you're getting liners and little taps and pulls, it's a really good thing because you know there's fish in and around the area that you're fishing. If your tips are sat there for minutes on end, you need to be fishing in a different spot because you're not on a ball of fish. When it is so cold like this today, and in the winter, fish ball up and they shoal up together, and 
when you're fishing in and around it, your line will be knocked by the fish, the fishing spins will be knocking your line, and that'll create them line as an indication. So always be looking for that. And don't be afraid of having an odd chuck in a different spot as well. You can't just cast one spot all day and expect to catch 10 carp off one little spot. Sometimes when it's brilliant fishing, that can happen. But most of the time, you really need to be thinking about where you're fishing, are you getting indications, are you not? It's a massive difference between getting bites and not. When you're fishing a single hook bait like I am today, you might be wondering how long am I gonna leave it in for? Because obviously we've got no attraction, as in feed or anything like that, so it's down to me and you as the angler to find where the fish are. So I always like to use a stopwatch in all my feeder and bomb fishing. It just gives you such a good guide about how long to leave it. And when I am fishing with bombing bread like this today, I won't leave it any longer than 10 minutes. If I'm getting liners and indications, I'll stay in that sort of area. But you know, if I'm not getting any liners or indications, which I haven't, I haven't yet, and I've been in six and a half minutes now, I'll then think about my next move because getting them liners indications gives you such a good idea whether or not there's fish in your area. Don't leave it any longer than 10 minutes. And that is a super handy little thing to have in your arsenal because it just gives you something to concentrate on when it is freezing like this. I'm, I'm actually thinking about my next move, unless I get a bite pretty soon. Right, we're at, we're at around 10 minutes and I've not had an indication. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go a little bit tighter to the bank, because as I said, fish at this time of year, they're right in cover. And I know from past experience, a lot of the carp live on the far bank here. So I'm just peeled off about half a metre of line. I'm gonna go a little bit tight to the far bank and I'm gonna change spots. I'm gonna go slightly right, probably two or three meters to the right. And one handy little tip is I've already got quite a few pieces of punch spread out already. Just saves you loads of time and maximizes your, your fishing time, which is important when you're max fishing, obviously. But even pleasure fishing, you wanna be doing as much fishing as, you, as possible. As quick as that, you're back in again. So I'm gonna go slightly right now. But I'm, I'm looking for them lines and indications. And to be honest, it's a bit worrying because I didn't have a single one in that spot. But it's not uncommon. You can't expect to chuck out straight away and get pulled in. It's not realistic at this time of year. So I've got to find the fish. So I'm going to try and do that now. I'm going to go slightly right. I'm happy with that. Could do with being a little bit tight to the far bank, if I'm honest but I don't want to cast all the time. I don't want to spook them fish. And trust me, you know, that bomb going in doesn't, might not sound a lot, but they know when it's, it's they don't like it. So I don't, I want to have as little cast as possible. You can sink that line, tighten up to the bomb, but remember, don't tighten up too much. I've actually got quite a light tip in today. I've got a 0.75 an ounce tip and that's really important because I don't want a thick sort of heavy tip because I'm only fishing with a 15 gram bomb. So I don't want a tip that's going to, as soon as I tighten up to it, it'll move the bomb because I think that might disturb my hook bait presentation and everything. Start my stopwatch. Again, I'm looking for them liners and indications. As soon as I get my first one, it's a real confidence boost and it gives you an idea of where the fish are. Like you have got to search around your peg a lot at this time of year because I'm saying the fish are tight to the far bank. Sometimes they might be a little bit further off. They might be in deeper water. Um, but you've just got to find where they are. And getting that first bite, it'll tell you where the fish are. Come on, fishies. The actual weight of the bomb that you're using is really important. I try and use as light a weight as possible because it makes as little noise as possible. If you get a big, say, ounce, ounce and a half bomb crashing in over the heads, I think it's just going to spook the fish. So use as light a weight as you can. Any opportunity you get to sort of scan the water and look for signs of fish, as in a fish popping its head up or bubbles or anything like that, obviously it's a bit windy today. And sometimes, especially when it's flat calm, you can see the reeds knocking and stuff like that. And that's a real giveaway sign where the fish are. So as soon as you do see anything like that, if you see a fish crash or put, it, put its head up, cast to it, don't be afraid, because 
usually when you see one there's, there's, that's where the shoal of fish will be and that's probably the best chance of a bite so when the wind does die a little bit I'm always scanning the water just looking for anything that uh, sort of give them fish away Was that a carp? Oh it was eating your tree now Sorry I thought it was a carp Or about to go straight in on it all like that Time for another chuck I reckon no indications as yet and to be honest the sun is horrific you might not be associating sunglasses always with winter but if you can't see where you're chucking it's no good at all so i'm gonna get my sunglasses on and hopefully that's uh gonna bring me a bite but i think i'm gonna have another chuck i'm gonna, I'm gonna go right i'm gonna go more in front of me i just feel like there's not a pod of fish to me left but i'd have had a liner by now I'm going to go slightly deeper water because I haven't had any indications tied up to the far bank so I'm going to go right in front of me again to send reeds there it's quite deep there to be honest so if they are in slightly deeper water at least I've got that covered now oh Oh, that were indication that. That was the first indication of the day, gang, and that's more in front of me in slightly deeper water, so that's interesting. I just had a little pluck, it was quite sharp. Usually when you're fishing for carp and then big, big fish, your liners are like this, a bit slow. So that was quite sharp and jaggy, but hey, I'll take anything right now. It's absolutely freezing in rock hard conditions, but yeah, that was the first indication. So fingers crossed uh, a bite is coming soon. That's only been two minutes as well. Oh, oh, yeah. Now that was a proper liner. Yeah, that was a proper liner. That was a carp liner, that. That's, that has given me a lot of confidence. I'm not going to lie. That's, that was like probably a six inch pull. That's two liners on this chuck. It's not gone yet, but I'm just going to leave it. Come on. So that chuck's been out 10 minutes now. I had those couple of indications. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a metre off and I'm going to obviously come back in on myself a little bit. Because when you are getting liners, obviously we only had a couple, but one of them was definitely a, a bigger fish. It was a slow pull, and that tells me that there could be even closer to myself the fish. So I've just wound back a metre, and we're chucking a similar spot. And put two bits of 10 mil punch bread on, as per. I'm going to see if... Uh, Casting it a bit shorter brings a bite. They might just be a little bit closer to myself in slightly deeper water. So we're going to set the trap again and roll with it. Oh, 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 oh. Yes. Go on. Woohoo! Oh, that's a, uh, that's a relief. And it just goes to show, finding those liners, obviously had them two, it's resulted in a, in a fish on. And I'll tell you what, I'll quickly run through the hardware that I'm actually using today because it's so important. Look at this wind today. Well, I'm actually using the 10 foot event a Steve Ringer rod and as you can see it's absolutely perfect for these size fish. I just love the the fact that it's super soft and it'll, you just feel like you'll never pull out of anything. Oh, oh that's a relief. I thought we were gonna bank our worries honestly. But I love this rod for this game. Especially when you're only fishing for a handful of fish. 
You want to make every fish count. That's why a super soft rod is so important. Nice common. The not so common common. There she is. Not the biggest fish in Hobart by any means, but very welcome on a freezing cold day. It just goes to show two casts in an area with no liners, no indications. And as soon as I chucked straight in front of me, had those two liners, come back a little bit and thought, had a fish closer to me. And obviously they are today, they're in slightly deeper water. Uh, and it resulted in a fish on the bank, which is um, I'm absolutely made up with. And it definitely gives me a lot to work on for the rest of the session. Let's flip her back. The bites when you're fishing bomb and bread are slightly different to say when you're fishing a hybrid or a method feeder. Sometimes you can get like sharp jags like this and I, I think it's the fish actually sucking in the hook bait when it's popped up off the bottom and they're shaking the head. Don't be afraid of striking into those because you're actually striking into the fish. It's slightly different but sometimes you get some proper pull round but usually it's like this, it's weird but it's those are what you should be striking at. So we're back at it, next chuck. A proper buzzing to get my first fish on the bank. So I'm gonna go the exact same spot. Why wouldn't you? Having those liners and then that bite. One little tip as well, whenever you are chucking to new spots, always try and have a far bank marker that is like a good reference point. So where I just caught that fish is a really like, the, well, the biggest, tallest tree, it's a prominent stump on it. That's what I'm chucking to. So you're almost within a two or three meter area of where you've just had that bite. So I'm gonna go back in the exact same spot and hopefully we'll get a bigger carp. Oh, that is honestly bang on the money, that one. Yeah, well happy. Another bite is incoming. I feel it, I'm confident now. It's amazing how um, our bite gives you a bit of confidence. Trust me, before that fish, I was uh, I was thinking um, it might be an early bath. Oh, oh, that is amazing. Another liner, straight away. There's obviously, like I mentioned, there's obviously that pod of fish is there. That is crazy. Come on. Well, that's what can happen when you do find where the fish are and where the where the sitting living you get indications you get them liners and it just results into uh into bites because you can fish for hours in the wrong spot sometimes and all of a sudden you're chucking to a new little area and it's like a totally different peg There we go, fish number two. Tell you what, I've got to pull it out of them reeds because it's definitely in it. Whoa. <laughs> <And> that, <laughs> I love it. And that's where that rod, honestly, it just bends all the way through. I absolutely love it. And they're obviously in that slightly deeper water and bang straight in front of me because I've had three indications, two bites now. So yeah, going well. I've just got to try and, got loads of reeds to me right here. I've just got to try and be a bit careful that you don't try and snag me up because it's feeling like it at the minute. Oh, that is not a good sign. Right, I'm gonna have to go wondering This will be fun. So, snagged me up that carp, and like I've mentioned, oh, he's a beautiful fish. Oh, he's massive. As I've mentioned throughout the whole bite size, you might only be fishing for an handful of fish today, so just make every fish count. That's where that soft rod, confidence in your gear is massive. But just take your time, because a lot of fish that is absolutely stunning. Oh, what a beautiful cart that is. Whew. Oh, that's a cracker. 
but just take your time with them honestly it's part of the fun as well and when you're only fishing for a few fish you want to make every single one count oh he's an absolute cracker what a stunning fish wow Well, that's what we came to Holbar for, an absolutely stunning common carp. Fought like mad too, and it just shows how devastating a hook bait bread is at this time of year for fish like this. And one thing that's been so important to me in this session is fishing in the right spot. You can literally spend hours fishing in the wrong spot, and as soon as you find where the fish are, it can lead to fish like this on the bank. Absolutely made up. How far do you actually pop up your bread? Today I found about 12 to 15 inches best because I'm actually fishing in around five foot of water and I almost visualize where I think the carp are going to be sat off bottom. So in slightly deeper water, I think you have to pop it up a little bit higher. In shallower water, say it's only three foot, don't be afraid of shortening that hook length down to say eight inches, but it is a proper trial and error sort of thing. While I'm waiting for my next bite, I'll quickly run you through hardware. I mentioned my rod choice earlier when I was playing that first fish. 10 foot of enter Steve Ringer rod, absolutely beautiful. Love it for a wide range of my fishing, if I'm honest. Skimmers, F1s, carp, brilliant. You feel like you're never going to lose a fish, it bends all the way through, and that's through to a 0.75 of an ounce tip. I don't like a too heavy a tip when I'm fishing with a bomb like this because I don't want my bomb to move because I feel like I'll ruin presentation. And when I do get liners, it moves your tip quite a bit. And when you have got a thickish, sort of heavy tip, and you do get that line, and you only got a light bomb, you can run the risk of moving it. So 0.75 an ounce tip. I've got eight pound Pulse Pro main line. You might be thinking, God, that's quite heavy. But I like it for the durability factor. I'm not casting far today. Probably 30 meters is my max chuck. So eight pound Pulse Pro is brilliant. Bulletproof stuff. Running down to the actual rig itself it's super simple i've got a snap link swivel a 15 gram bomb and a speed bead simple as that it's honestly it takes you about five seconds to set up um, and hook length wise i've actually got a ready rig it's a foot oh 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 that'll be one on oh no it's not well, it is you know what this is i can't believe that it's a small thing that's not what you want i reckon it's a roach you know what, I've hardly ever caught a roach on bomb and bread. Look at that. Not just good for carp, good for roach too. Love it. Itchy. But yeah, I've got a ready rig on there, 14 Super MWG hook on, 15 inches long, and I'm literally just popping it up straight off the, that 15 inch length. It's got a speed stop on it, so it's super quick and easy to change up baits. Literally put in two pieces of 10 mil punch bread on the hair. I love that Super MWG hook. I use it for a lot of my bread fishing, corn, pellets, anything like that. I just like that straight point hook. I think you get a really good hook hold. Uh, and that's through to 019 engage hook length. Again, super durable. I'm fishing for big fish potentially, so I don't want to use anything too light. And yeah, that's the, that's the hardware. Real choice, 4,000 Aventus reel. Perfect little combo with this 10 foot rod get her back in there. One thing I would say about these Super MWG ready rigs, they're absolutely brilliantly finished off. They've got a little tiny piece of silicon, which means that you can position the hair in the perfect position. Oh, not another line of that. Yes. Oh, that, that was perfect timing. Honestly, I love these ready rigs for this sort of fishing. That little bit of silicon, I really do think that's important. You can position the hair in the perfect place. And honestly, I've got a load of confidence in that Super MWG hook. I think you get absolutely brilliant hook holds. Another beauty of them is the 15 inches long, which is about as long as I really want to be popping it up, to be honest. And you can always cut them down if you need to. Something really rewarding about getting a bites when it's absolutely freezing. This sun might 
give you a bit of a false sense that we might be lying about the cold, but trust me, it has been absolutely freezing today. So it's nice to get a few bites. Definitely a little pod of them there in that, uh, against them reeds there, straight in front of me. Coming off the bank slightly has been really, really good. Another nice common. Another thing I'm gonna mention is your landing net head choice. And this is something that I've only learned recently. I'm actually using a hair net. And that's really important when you're using speed stops because it means that they don't crack off and snap in your net. If your holes in your mesh are too big, it can snap and it just wastes loads of time. So that's why I've gone to this sort of hair meshy style net. So handy when you're using air rigs. I'm gonna get this one in the can. Fighting hard today. Look at that rod bending perfect. Come here. Oh, look at that. Really dark common. Beautiful. Oh. Lovely. Whew, like a wildy that one. I'm going to show you exactly how to hair rig bread properly because it's one of the most important parts when you're doing this style of fishing. So, got my little trusty punch box, keeps your bread nice and fresh. And you've got various punch sizes. Personally, when I'm fishing for fish, say 5 to 15 pound carp, I like the 10 mil punch. Just one of my, you know, I've got a bit of confidence in it. It's the only one I seem to use really. And I always use two bits of bread. So, I'm going to punch out two bits of bread, just like that. Get me speed stop needle, and you've got your speed stop there, which is just a super handy way of keeping the bread in position. And we get the two pieces, I'm going to punch them right through the middle of that bread. Just be nice and gentle with them, just push them on nice and softly so you don't split the bread. Push them on, so they're actually sitting on the hair rig like that. And I just pull them down just so at the right at the base of that speed stop. And as you can see from that, you've got the perfect hook bait on the hair. And that'll swell up nice and visual. The carp will love it. It's just the perfect little hair length for bread. One thing that I've learned about this style of fishing is you've got to be really versatile in where you fish. Sometimes you might draw a peg in a match or fish a peg on a pleasure session and it looks unbelievable. You're thinking there's so many features in my peg. There's trees, there's reeds, there's lilies. And you might think, oh, I'm definitely going to catch there. But you don't know that until you actually start fishing. So you've got to explore your peg. Like today, for example, I've caught in the area of my peg that I wouldn't fancy getting a bite. So it just shows that you never know where the fish are going to be. Definite lull after those few fish straight in front of me. Real slow spell. And I actually cast it well right. Oh, that's a lovely fish, that. Well right, proper extreme of my peg. I had, a, I had a liner, and then about a few minutes later, it followed up with this absolutely cracking mirror. That has been hard work, honestly, but if you'd have said to me you'd catch four fish today on a bitterly cold day i'd have snapped your hand off what a beautiful way to finish the old day go on that's a cracker 